Alright, we're finally getting to Dark Tournament. Now, last we left off, we were talking about how Yusuke wanted to train for two months with Genkai and get actually powerful. Like, actually put in some effort. We know that, of course, after he's fully trained, we got people who are scaling, like, their peers to Suzaku and Rando. And he ain't being able to check Yusuke. Yusuke can keep up effortlessly while at, like, no energy. So it's showing huge progress. Now, as we move on from there, we have one of the very first people for scaling. Now, if you remember Byako, who can lava dip and walk himself out, internally explode and be okay. And we have Suzaku, who can completely just turn humans into cinders with a mere touch. Well, now we have our first actual fire demon, Zeru. Now, importantly here, we're talking about still D-Class, by the way. Now, Yusuke may have gotten to the very bottom of C-Class, but Zeru and Hiei, they're still D-Class. Zeru would effortlessly defeat someone like Suzaku, but to keep the feet to the, you know, to somebody else who would do a similar feat, Yaku who could walk himself out of lava. Suzaku who could, you know, reduce a human to cinders within a touch, like, instantly. Zeru would be able to do that to, like, Byako. I won't say Suzaku yet, but honestly, he... I'll show you why he should even be able to do it to, to Suzaku, but to make it as less of, you know, to lowball it, he would absolutely demolish Byako with no effort. And he essentially shows that he's, like, a boss of the team, it's what he's coming off, right? It's what's being shown. And they repeatedly show that he's, you know, supposedly, like, the strongest on their team. Which is why Hiei takes a liking to fighting this guy. And when they fight, you see that Zeru actually thinks that, you know, he shows he doesn't think that is gonna be that much. He pretty drastically, um, underestimates Hiei. Goes in, and we can actually see the first showing of, like, some crazy Yu Hakusho regeneration and how it works, because... A lot of these characters actually have regeneration. Um, earlier, the fight that I skipped is Kuwabara versus Rinku because we don't get really any scaling there. But Rinku does show us that you, he can use healing. Um, Kuwabara later shows us a lot of the regeneration with healing with uh, energy as well. But here, it's so verbatim. He hits through Hiei's gut, sends him a flame, and when he thinks it's done, he stands back up, and he is essentially like unharmed. Uh, I'm not going to say he's totally unharmed, like, energy levels-wise. He's, however, he he doesn't have the hole in his gut anymore. And we do find out later, like, Zero really was, like, really powerful. And he was like, I had no choice. I had to, you know, I had to use the dragon technique to take him down. Because what you're seeing right here, this is, once again, what I'm talking about when it comes to, like, D-class powers or the lowest of C-class powers, if you're not going off of uh, the actual author statement. We're talking about Dragon of the Darkness Flame. Now, Zeru could incinerate someone like Suzaku and someone like Byako with, like, less than a touch. Wouldn't even have to touch him. Well, now we have Hiei, who with his Darkness Flame, one-shots Zeru and turns him into nothing but ash. I know there were some people like wanting me to cover specifically uh, certain dark tournament teams and people like Zeru himself and such, but I feel like I can most justify this when I go into again the mathematical section when I bring up like a when I essentially compile everything into uh, a respect thread or like the final product of a respect video covering everything with York Show and, and with the math and such. So for now, that's going to be put off to the side, but it is it's so evidently ridiculously impressive when you consider someone like Byako, someone like Suzaku would just absolutely get incinerated by this guy and you have someone in the same demon class rank of power whether you say that he is the lowest of C class where you would then also have to say that's where he is or he's at the top of D class off of the author's statements where you would also say he is and it goes to show, once more, just the ridiculous gulf in power between the classes. And so, yeah, he one-shots him. He turns the fire demon into ash. That's 
crazy. But moving on from there, now we have Chu. Now the quick thing about Chu, because we don't actually get much scaling here, is he's the one who actually wakes up Yusuke. Because as we had seen before, Zero was trying to wake up, he was trying to like ag on Yusuke. And he he thinks, okay, he's just an idiot, but really, Yusuke is so much above. Yusuke is the first one who would really have a strong argument for being the lowest of C-class, if you go by the author's statements. Um, and it's Chu that wakes him up. Now, they actually say, he's like, his power is actually lower than Zeru's, but something's weird. And then they're like, oh, I, something, I said, okay, something's shady. He actually has a lot of power here. And that's when they go into their fighting, and... Again, not much is huge for scaling, but we see that Chu powers up with his drinking, and as we know, as has been shown many times now, this would be a substantial boost, like with anything else. Granted, this might be the one and only time where we don't actually have feats to back up the power boost, so I won't go too far into it, other than Yusuke is able to match him. And they are also shown that they're able to tank their each other's blasts and then keep fighting. And then as we know, we have the knife edge deathmatch. Uh, the only other feat with Chu like kicking him through, uh, like past the stadium into the stadium wall and such. Uh, once more, I've talked about this plenty of times already, but moving a character doesn't necessitate a certain, like a fixed amount of force. Kicking Yusuke like that is exceedingly impressive and would actually scale with what he's shown to be able to resist. Like, kicking a normal human as far as Chu did might not be that impressive anymore. But imagine if he could do it to Hulk, right? Uh, now all of a sudden it's very, very impressive. But he's knocking a character the same distance, right? So the feat's actually very impressive. Again, I can go more in depth with this stuff later when I can show just how much force Yusuke can resist without being pushed. But it's time for a little bit of Taguro scaling. You know, the guy who's going to one-shot this entire team. Okay, one at a time, because he does it with punches, right? But he goes to 45% against people who should, who ought scale to the lowest of C-class. Now that we're outside of even, um, you know, Togashi's words, uh, saying that they're you know, anything with D-class. Given that even at 0% and even at like a 20% at most when he's like massively holding back, that, I don't think you would have one shots to this degree. I think the feats are now showing that we're getting into the lowest of C class with these demons. Regardless, this is 45% and you can see just how casual it is and it's a 1v5. We can also see just how big they are. Now, the point of them being big is that Taguro is usually the big one and his fists are big. <laughs> Now, when we talk about potency, of course, we're talking about, like, the joules per centimeter cubed, and that's why it goes into the size of his fist. However, the more you destroy, that also matters. That requires more joules, not just into the, you know, divided into the size of the attack. And these people are massive compared to his fist. So, that's some scaling for the future as well, but we can see it here. He effortlessly just massively overwhelms with singular punches to people that are massively larger than himself. Now, what's more, as we move on to the next fight that also has some big increases in power, it starts off with Kuwabara being able to see into the past. Now, we had talked about his psychic abilities before advancing. Now he can actually see into the past of other people that he's going to be fighting and hasn't fought yet. But within that fight, we can get a few things. So first, an interesting thing is that we can see that energy that Yusuke actually worked towards being able to use is described as light. This is another kind of callback to light being an actual speed that you can argue for even early Yu Hakusho speeds for attacks. Um, again, I just want to throw that out there. I don't accept it as I don't believe there's feats that even suggest it's remotely true. However, for those who enjoy their statements, and I will be, you know, caveating this as I go into scaling other series as well, but you have scans that can suggest that even like beginning of series essentially Yusuke has light speed ray gun and 
even here now it's showing that the techniques he works towards are light based. Cool. Now onto the actual fight. We have M1, M2, and M3, which I will be calling 1, 2, and 3, against Kuwabara, Yusuke, and Genkai, or Masked Fighter. And the thing is, is we can see some of the destructive levels that they have, but the important thing is, as anyone would know, you actually need to have a certain amount of power to be able to even see their techniques at all. And Yusuke and Kuwabara cannot see their techniques. However, as they keep going, we know that Yusuke, like always, he gets a little pissy, and by that I mean he amps himself up by quite a bit. And he amps himself up to a degree that he can actually not only see their techniques, as, you know, maybe that would put him on even footing now, but no, now he can easily and casually overwhelm these characters. These people all already scale to be above someone at the level of Chu. If not, we'll just say equal them. Except now he's doing it casually and multiples at a time. In fact, rather, we know that <laughs> we know that they scale above Chu. I'm sorry. If they were at Chu's level, then he wouldn't have had any problem seeing any of their techniques when he first started. He needed this big amp to even be able to see their techniques. The amp, however, further extrapolates his power to the degree that he also can handle them casually, on top of it, it, he doesn't go to an even fight anymore. We then finish it off with Genkai saving them using another light based feat, granted I want to make this clear, the light is reaching them before she does. Now you could take this as her, she's not having light based, you know, speed with the attack. The attack is actually her reaching them with their fingers to do the whatever incantation. But you could also say that the spirit gun isn't about like the fist reaching them. That like the spirit gun would be like the actual physical light reaching them in speed. That it is like light speed. Yada yada. You, you get the idea that you could argue this. Um, however, just wanted to throw them out there because there are some scans that actually suggest it more than just statements. There you go. Now, one last thing is, Yusuke finishes off Dr. Ichigaki, an important thing about Dr. Ichigaki is that he has a serum to really empower his strength. And he had already seen the level of power that Yusuke was throwing out against 1, 2, and 3, and he still tries to take on Yusuke at the end. Perhaps it was just foolishness, but this man was very calculating was calculating the exact odds and percent chances of his being able to win and he still was like oh i have an ace up my sleeve only for him to get completely stomped and so that leads very high credence to show that the amp that yusuke got was much larger than even ichigaki was being able to plan for with his calculations as Initially, he goes in thinking he has a 99% chance, and it was above that actually, I believe, um, of his team's victory. But as they go on talk, they describe it, it's like the human spirit is something you can't calculate for. So, and this is in, you know, goes in with like Kuwabara and Yusuke, like growing in power here. Specifically Yusuke, really, for sure. Um, and so he just couldn't, I don't think he could keep up because he's pretty confident that he can take Yusuke when he powers up thinking he has an ace. He's just completely stomped. But coming up, we have some of my favorite fights in the Dark Tournament. Starting, like, you can see here, Jin is an amazing character. A lot of people love him. And also, a lot of people know him. He is a famous character within Yu Hakusho itself, not just outside, as a fan favorite. But his power is, you know, world renowned. And we get to see that later. But first, we'll be moving on into Kurama versus Gama. Now, the thing about this fight is that it's actually essentially just Yusuke and Kurama taking on their team. Now, we have Gama here, and we get a decent bit of scaling here, which is pretty cool. So, the thing about Gama is he seems like he might be a throwaway, but we actually see some impressive abilities. Now, as they go on and fight, we can see that Gama can actually keep up with Kurama pretty well when he amps himself up with his war paint. 
which uses his blood as we know. Now, one thing to take note of is when he actually catches Kurama's leg here, he talks about having your feet become as heavy as lead. Well, it's not actually that, it's actually much more. When he finally has him tied down completely, we're talking about here, we can see 280 kilograms, uh, yeah, 280 kilograms of weight around the totality of his body. When you measure that out, that's coming out to 70 kilograms of weight on each limb. Now, that's not seeming like that, like that's actually too much. You know, the scaling should be getting much higher than that. Well, let's cover a few things. And trust me, we'll be hitting the scaling hard. At 70 kilograms per limb, we have this affecting Karama. Do you think that this would affect even Kuwabara to the same degree? Hell, especially someone like Yusuke? I don't even think it would affect Hiei to the same degree, especially given Karama's nature. However, if you think 70 kilograms per limb is only a little bit, wait until I get to like a 10% Taguro showing with him carrying the amount of weight he does casually with a full stadium on his back from one end of the island to the next. Because if you're talking about physical like lifting strength, which is not striking power, which is a lot of what these calculations have shown and their increases, but if you want to be impressed by lifting strength and actual movement of weights, we'll get to there, you know? So currently, we have 70 kilograms of weight on Karama, who is physically the least impressive. However, we do know that he can still somewhat, you know, keep away from Gama until Gama leaps in only to get one shot by Karama using a thorn whip within his hair, one shotting someone within his power group. Well, I suppose not decisively one shotting, to be fair, as we can see here. Um, and he even notes that. He could survive if he, you know, if he actually just stopped trying to kill Karama or stopped trying to fight him here. But he chooses to instead fight Karama to the last of his life and seals off his ability to use spirit energy. Now here's where some real scaling comes in because as has been covered many times already, Spirit energy is what allows you to amp your physicals. And Karama now has 280 kilograms of weight around him and zero spirit energy. So let's see how Karama, the frailest of the physical side, does. Because he actually was still able to, you know, move a decent bit against Gama. Well, here we have Toya. And Toya. It's by Hiei, even. He's talking about, like, a lot stronger than Seryu. He's a formidable master. And he shows that, you know, he's a full notch above someone like Seryu or even his sister, Yukina. We, again, have reached into the bottom of C-Class. And Toya notes that Gama granted him 10 minutes. Here, we can see that he, uh, that he shoots out, like, tiny but many multiple shards of ice at Karama, with Karama actually being able to acrobatically move out of the way. Again, this is without spirit energy. This is ridiculously impressive. Once more, I'll get into calculations. This for, for now, just note, this is insane. Now he does get hit, but not even close to all of them. And at this point, I don't want to mislead you. The time does go by with Toyo trying to play, you know, safe, and Karama is, he is still weighed down, for sure, but it is getting a weakening effect. Now, by weakening effect, uh, we don't really get to see if it's weakening in that it's just the time limit, or if it's weakening as in he's getting less and less weight applied to himself. We don't really know for certain, or my memory is going bad because I don't have a scan of literally every single thing. Uh, I do take the scans of everything I feel could be used as a feat. But, either way, 
at zero spirit energy regardless, these shards of ice are at lower C-class speeds. Which shows that Karma has also amped himself with time. This is, oh my gosh, this is like when Yusuke had zero spirit energy and he was able to still like, what, hit harder than he had ever done before with like a small amp, like in the Genkai tournament. This is huge scaling for him to have zero spirit energy right now. Now the thing is, is Toya doesn't say it here, but we all, uh, well, maybe if you, this is, if this is your first time ever seeing Yuhawk show, I'm sorry, perhaps my videos aren't as scaling friendly because some of it requires you to have seen it before to know exactly, but I'll tell you here. Toya does describe earlier, talking about that Karama was using slight movements to make sure that all of his vitals were always missed. And Gama knows that time is not on his side, that he probably can't beat Karama uh, if he gets back all of his spirit energy. And so he goes to finish it, and you can actually see a little trick that Karama is doing in the top left panel here. And what happens is he actually sowed death seeds within his own, like, cuts and blood, so that he could actually access the spirit and energy within his blood as the Gama, what he marked him with, can find all of his spirit energy directly within his body. It couldn't come out. He couldn't use it until the blood was flowing out of his body. It, it, it took him, for him to be able to use any energy at all, it required him to actually mix in any of his techniques with the blood. Oh, which does remind me, yes, he was trying to use blood to wipe off some of the uh, weight things, which again, still doesn't tell us if it was actually time frame that was helping or if it allowed him to move even just slightly better. But with no like no spear energy access at all, no matter how you cut it, um, I'm sure I will go into lowballing everything. It's quite impressive on the physical end when you're considering this is Karama. But here we can see that once again, he's able to take out uh, Toya no problem once he can actually access his an actual technique. Now we move on to someone like Bakugan who. He was the third person for Karama to fight, and he abuses the fact that Karama actually lays unconscious from his own technique. But Yusuke was worried for him, until he actually takes a punch. He slides back, but he's laughing because he literally cannot hurt Yusuke. He's so weak that Yusuke mocks him for being just absolute fodder. And he's like, okay, yeah, you, never mind. I was worried that you might have actually seriously injured unconscious Karama with your punches. But now I see I had nothing to worry about. Your garbage, your trash. And this would be someone who is, would be scaling to like D class at the lowest. However, now we can see the gulf in power. <laughs> And by D-Class, of course, I'm talking about on the higher end. These, everybody who entered the tournament, entered with the ability to, you know, their idea was that they could take on all the other teams. This will be more apparent if you think that I'm giving this guy too much credit. I'll show you somebody else who people probably think is, I might be giving too much credit, but you'll see what I'm talking about. This guy is probably at the high end of D-Class, um, probably below Zeru, but like his teammates were also at the high end of D-Class. Right. This guy would probably be at least rank, uh, Rinku level. And Yusuke, like he would do to Rinku, absolutely just obliterates him. And it takes no effort. He does the most casual of spirit guns to disperse his uh, smoke screen. And just completely obliterates this guy. Catching the attention of, guess who? Finally, Jin. Jin is finally coming up. But before we jump right into that, I want to show here, we even get a little bit of scaling within the, its own team. Now, we have use case like, eh, you rest, you know, I'll take on the last two. But Karama notes that, you know, there's a power gulf going on here. We have, if if the last guy, Bokukin, was, you know, null compared to their team, like he's complete fodder, as I said he would be, we have... Gamma as a good standard, at like the lowest of C-class. Well, then we have the difference of like Gamma to Bakuken. Well, we have that between like Gamma and Toya. 
and he's of course still at the lowest end of C class. But now they're talking about like the last two must be very powerful. And what's funny is they're still at the lowest end of C class. You'll see. But we have a bit more scaling before the gin fight. In which case, Hiei notes it's coming. Now, for those who don't know, the reason why it's been mostly just Kurama and Yusuke here is that Genkai and Hiei were kind of screwed over by the committee to try and make it so that Team Yurameshi loses. Thing is, is that Hiei has been injured after using the Dragon of the Darkness Flame. He hasn't been able to get any training in, really. Uh, and he was attacked by M4 and M5 and the other team with the M's 1, 2, 3. And he didn't really get to do much of a showing. So, when we see him next, if you're wondering why he's so massively powerful, this is it, actually. What happens is, he actually starts to master the Darkness Flame. But he's severely crippled what was thought for life. However, the very person who actually is restricting people's movement actually does have a healing effect with her restricting their movement. So they're actually trapped in that tent by her power. It's like a barrier, but you can see her sweating and he's like, it's coming almost. And he's gripping his hand of which he couldn't even do previous. What's more is Genkai's like, she's noticed it. We can see the visible sweat on her. And Genkai notes like a prodigious force is building around Hiei. He's not emitting the aura of a wounded person, but he is, he's very wounded. He's drastically injured. However, when Jin steps up, Genkai takes note as well here, as does he in his own way, but we, see, can see, we can actually see an exclamation point for Genkai, because Jin is no joke. I want to make this clear, back on Hiei, just real quick, the mastering of the Darkness Flame is such a ridiculous amp, oh, I can't wait to actually just show the actual power that it has. Now, on to Jin versus Yusuke. Now, to note, Jin is extremely agile, able to hit Yusuke and hurt him with a singular punch harder than most characters can actually do, <laughs> to be clear. One other impressive thing is that he can create so much force that he can maintain an actual like tornado. Now this is with wind manipulation, he's not doing this with pure physicals that somehow maintain a tornado, but a uh, tornado maintained nonetheless. And this is a lot of force. He runs in with Yusuke, misses, and the air pressure alone, not with just pure physicals, <laughs> we're, we're not that strong yet in Yu Show. but this is not direct contact. Even the tornado is not making contact, misses, and sends him flying all the way into the wall. Now he is able to catch himself, but then Jin follows right behind, and obliterates a massive chunk of all this concrete and even somewhat below him without actually making contact. This, once more, will be calculable, but shows insane growth. Now, one thing to take note is all of this when we're talking about potency, however, because perhaps you're really concerned about the amount of destruction shown here. Again, save it for the math later, but potency-wise, we've even seen versus Suzaku higher than building level. Hell, Biako, his tiger screen was already large building level in potency. So, just save it if you're looking for mountain busting in terms of like actual uh, destructive value. Again, I always separate into potency, but we are sh finding very high amount of potency. This is not coming from uh, a big aura blast or anything. These are techniques confined down to the size of like fists. Here you can see the destruction a bit better. We can also see that it actually cratered the ground beneath. And, and once more, a lot of this was out without making any contact, unlike say the spirit gun. That is absolutely insane once you get into things like air pressure. Um, being able to accomplish these feats. Now, we do get to see how Jin compares to Yusuke. Yusuke still hits very hard, but for once he's not one-shotting someone. But Jin, he feels it. He feels it pretty badly. And 
he kind of flies away so that, you know, he can recover himself just for a spirit gun to come flying at him. And we, once more, I can show the speed of the spirit gun later, but Jin easily reacts at this distance. And using his wind power, is able to, with wind alone, redirect it entirely. This is absolutely ridiculous air pressure. Air pressure that he's using on Yusuke himself. Which is why, as I showed with like with Chu and such, he can tank his own spirit guns and blast. The potency behind the actual like pressure, uh, which is also measured in potency when we're talking about like um like water pressure or anything like that. The actual potency and pressure of his air is massive. Huge for it to be able to do this. And Yusuke is able to tank blows like this. We can also see in the next panel just how much further the spear gun has traveled to get an idea of the speed for minimum values for later. He continues on, able to make uh, more like tornadoes. But what's interesting here is, real quick, one just back to Hiei, they, they go back to this point. At this point, the committee is still trying to screw over Yusuke, and Hiei is feeling himself. Now, if you think Hiei is no longer injured, you'll see later that that is so far removed from the truth, he's actually drastically injured. Not even, he's portions upon portions of his actual power right now. And yet, he's still confident enough now. He's like, screw the rules, I have money. That was a Kaiba joke, sorry. <laughs> Those who oppose me will die. I'll kill them all. And we get to see this where Hiei... He knows he's essentially on equal terms with Yusuke at this level. He feels himself at that degree. And he's like, we'll just kill everyone. Screw everything else. And, I mean, Yusuke, you can see Yusuke's face. He realizes his, his actual face and power. Uh, I think, is it Rukia? I think that's her name. Anyways, the girl who's restraining them. He's like, everybody is actually getting afraid of Hiei. With... Even the very first time he used the dragon, Kurama was, again was talking about, like, you shouldn't use that power on Earth. We're getting some foreshadowing on the absolute crazy power of Hiei. But back to the fight. <laughs> we have Yusuke gathering his energy into his fist, and Genkai's like, he's going to do it. Now, she describes it. It's like, the ray gun concentrates the energy on the finger. In contrast here, it's over his entire body. It's a big risk, demanding much energy in a single instant. He needs more than that to win. It's too risky. And Jin is very amused by this. And what's more, we can see just how effective it is. He runs in, and you remember all that air pressure making no contact? How about Yusuke? Catching his fist directly with all that air pressure going out. He has two tornadoes going now, mind you. And Yusuke barely slides. Remember when without any contact he's pushed? This is what I'm talking about when like throwing someone or like knocking someone a distance when they're, um, you know, not just a normal human, which we can use as like a baseline. Like it's so much more impressive depending on who it is because this time when he's actually amping himself up with his aura he doesn't slide nearly as far like at all and he's able to full contact catch his tornado and we can see here he actually deflects the next one as well and blows away Jin for a one shot this however of course took pretty much everything he had and he was able to take out Jin, who was matching him in power, with a one-shot. Now, he didn't, like, kill Jin or anything, mind you. He just knocked him unconscious. And it did take, like, all of his power. Back to Hiei. <laughs> okay. Once more, at this point, for those who don't know, the committee says, you know what, hey, screw you, Yusuke. That was a tie because of bullcrap reasons. And... They were about to rule that Team Yurameshi loses. <laughs> and Hiei is like, Boy, I'm ready. Good, good. I'm glad you're going this way. I'm ready to kill everyone. We're going to play a survival game, Law of the Strongest. 
and everybody is terrified of this man. And Rukia, I'm gonna call her Rukia, I hope I'm not getting it wrong. She's like, no more for me, I don't agree. Chief, I, you know, I don't think I can hold him any longer. <laughs> it's like, Yusuke's like, she's right, I'm already there, he ate, let's go to hell with this place. And the whole crowd is like, oh god, they're gonna do it, like, they're gonna kill us all. <laughs> and everyone is just terrified. And it's just so funny because as I'm gonna show you, Hiei is at fractions of his real aura energy power. He is nowhere close to full power. And so this is the amp that goes on almost, well not behind the scenes, it's pretty blatant, but it's not through a fight. Now, <laughs> later we do get another feat here. When we talk about potency, remember how I talked about is Jules divided into centimeters cubed. Now when we think of a fist, that's already extremely small. Now this is against a normal human, but <laughs> look at 0% Taguro swagging on somebody. That's his finger. <laughs> and that is having an effect, uh, not to make this too dark or anything, but I don't know if those who have wielded shotguns or have seen the things that shotguns can do to people, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, just to get this out of the way, this is more impressive than a shotgun. Um, at 0% with just a finger flick. Uh, this is a lot of force. That's as much as I'll say for it. This is ridiculous. Okay, moving on. Now, here's something I want to show you. Is Remember how I talked about Bakugan being like... Oh, he's fodder, you know, I, there's no way he's like scales to Rinku even. Okay, another person that a lot of people like to like harp on as being weak is a character called Makintaro. But he's not weak! He's not weak! We can see here, team, you're, uh, you're Togi? Oh god, I'm, you know what? I'm so bad at names right now. Um, they go against Team Roku, and it was a wash. Makintaro goes against a character named Ninga. Let's say he was even, you know, mid D class. For whatever reason, why would that person be in the tournament? That makes absolutely no sense. Honestly, nobody should be scaling below little kid Rinku. Everybody should be pretty comparable to him if they're going to be the most fodder of fodder. But Makintaro, as we know when he faces Hiei later, is uninjured. All of them are uninjured. Makintaro is not fodder to these other contestants. He's not. He's actually considered quite strong. He's just fodder to his team. I just wanted to make that very clear. The reason he's so fodder is because he faces Hiei. <laughs> so let's move on. Now I want to make it clear, Kurama and Hiei are still very injured. Yusuke is like, are you going to be able to be recovered from your wounds? Karma's like, eh, I will be by tomorrow, but Kar he calls him out, he's like, you're, you're kind of forcing yourself, right? It's obvious that you're hurt, that it, it's normal. But Karma's like, dude, you're the same, come on now. And, uh, we're going to get into a little bit of scaling before these fights. All of these are big scaling points. Now, here we see Genkai telling him to blow apart that little rock, that little bitty rock, at full power. And she's like, just do as I say. And, you know, he blows it apart. Cool. Oh, man, this goes against just how powerful Yusuke is. Oh, my gosh. Why is he just, you know, at full power? That's all he blows up. I've seen this actually on Comic Vine, and it's like, holy crap. I want to make all of this clear. Yes, all of this is pre-Spirit Orb Yusuke. If you even wanted to say that this is the level he's at, the scaling of exponential terms still shows exactly what I'm talking about. But, I don't know... It's like, who says that this rock is his limit? Like, he blows it all the way up. Let's say, like, the rock was, like, three times bigger. Now, we, we know that Genkai blows up something much bigger. Let me actually get to that skin. You can see the difference in size of what Genkai actually blows up. And, you know, Yusuke's proud. He's like, perfect. He, he does it. Cool. And she's like, eh, not bad. Too. And he's like, well, you want to try it? And you can see the dis like, the difference. Now, we can see numbers here, like... Use case, I'm like 10 times bigger than my rock. That's not 10 times. In actual volume, that thing is massively bigger. It's still not a mountain or anything, but we're just gonna get an idea here. Like, 
Let's say Yusuke did actually full power spirit gun that rock that's bigger than what Gen you know, the one that Genkai's gonna use. Now, we don't have to say that it would actually obliterate through the entirety of the rock. And to make something clear here, when we're talking about like building level potency, we're talking about like it doesn't require that a whole building goes down. Again, that's not like destructive, like, DC. We can see like destroying, depending on how you're destroying like a whole thing of concrete, uh, especially when we were talking about, again, the size, like a bullet being extremely tiny. It depends on the size of your attack versus how much is destroyed. Well, this is pure rock. And this scales above like a section of concrete. You could consider this kind of an anti-feat, but really not. Like, how much destruction if he was to hit the massive rock would have actually been caused? That's what I would have wanted to know. But, let's get back to the scaling. Ginkai shows that when she fires, she's able to completely obliterate the entirety of the rock. Well, it doesn't destroy the sides because it's too potent. It's actually too small. It's like a bullet hitting a wall. It's not destroying the whole wall. Cool. We also see that just the air pressure alone actually knocks Poo off of Yusuke's head and sends the rocks flying. It also, you can see in the distance, obliterates the tops of multiple trees flying way beyond it. So it's like, did it have the force to obliterate the entire rock if it had the AoE to do so? Of course it did. But is it potent enough? Or, I mean, is it um, like big enough to? No, but that doesn't go against the potency. Same with use case spirit gun. I, I just I don't know. I just saw the really dumb point being made on Comic Vine because until I actually upload the entire respect thread, I'm still there. I do plan on uh, getting off of it eventually. But this should show a good reason on why you don't just look at only the destructive uh, of only the destruction, but the size of things. Now here we can see more. Um, that all the trees in the back are destroyed. Uh, just confirming it more, the other shot showed it better, like for the pure distance, it becomes white there for whatever reason. But here we go, we can see the best picture showing all the way back there, all those trees, because yeah, they actually go further and further back from each other, um, being obliterated. And what's more is they're actually even tilted to their sides with it only obliterated like the very tops. But, here we can say, like, okay, I'm gonna ask you one last time. Your, your wish to become strong, you still want it to happen? And Yusuke's like, yeah, more than ever. So, now we get to the four strongest. We are in the Dark Tournament semi-finalist teams. And we have Makintaro as part of it. That's right. I just want you to know, Makintaro's not fodder. It just seems that way. He's not fodder, actually. Now, we all know what happens to them afterwards, but at this point, we can see the four strongest teams. This video's being long enough, and now that I know that I could either make this like an hour and a half video, or I can just do it in two parts, uh, I'm gonna do it in two parts, aka part, what, three and then part four? Uh, but, um, I do wanna really hit all of the scaling, so I don't wanna skimp on any feats that I might miss or whatever the case. So, that's what we're gonna do. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends. The scaling is really awesome. We'll really get to see just how powerful um, these characters really get to because we're talking about like, man, Karama had no energy. Karama's still injured and he could still do what he did. Hiei is very injured. He still doesn't have full power. And we'll go on. But Makatar is not fodder, boys. Oh, he's not. <laughs> And um, this is why I said, like, even Bakugan, who is considered, like, complete fodder, because he is, like, comparatively, but, like, that's why you can't just say, like, oh, he's rando level or something, like, he's still, like, high D-class levels. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next video. Uh, peace. Stir.